The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them, that both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And as his disciples approached him, saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evil doers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Good morning. One of the television programs which both Diane and I have very much enjoyed over the years is the Sherlock Holmes series which has been on A&E uh, starring Jeremy Brett. Everything about the show is so well done. The authenticity of urban and rural settings, the superb acting and directing, just everything is top notch. The character of Sherlock Holmes, as he faces one perplexing mystery after another, brings out what little deductive powers I have, and I find myself doing my feeble best to work along with him as a sort of junior Dr. Watson, as together we work toward solving the crime at hand. Inspired by stories of the master detective, I decided to bypass what is given us as Jesus' interpretation of the parable, because I think it was added later on by somebody else, and see if I could take a look at the parable in today's Gospel lesson from some new perspective. If I could get some different slant on it, which would garner some new information about what Jesus was driving at, that is, what the whole thing he was revealing here about the nature and life of the kingdom of God as it is present in the world of you and me, the world of human beings. In this sleuthing, I was amazed to discover something which was, at least to me, brand new and shed interesting light on the meaning of the parable. This process of mine centered around the discovery that various English translations of the parable use different words for one word in particular. The word which is rendered weeds in the New Revised Standard translation, which you just heard, and what we use for public worship here. That same word, I found, was translated tares in the King James Version, and a third way as darnell in the New English Bible. That's a curious thing, I said to myself. I wonder what word the original Greek text 
uses at this point. By now, I was on to something, I just knew it. My great New Testament and lexicon gave up the key. The Greek word, which has been translated variously as weeds, tares, and darnel, proved to be zenzania, the plural form of zenzania. Zenzania, it just slides off the tongue, doesn't it? Let's all say it together, zenzania. And guess what zenzania is? Well, it's darnel. And darnel is not a generic or general term at all, but a proper noun for a specific plant. Zinzanion, or darnel, is a plant which looks identical to wheat until the very end of the growth cycle. It has a noxious, poisonous, and intoxicating effect when eaten, and it was almost always found in the grain fields in our Lord's time. The true grain of wheat and rye and zinzanion were commonly found together where there were grain fields. Well, so much for the old image of grain interspersed with common, ordinary weeds or some sort of tenacious trailing vines. That had certainly been what I had pictured when hearing the parable. And this new information which I discovered allowed me to at last ask the question I had never dared ask before. The question of why no one caught on that there were weeds in the field until after the wheat plants had developed grain on them. Now it was clear, because if you knew where to look, the evidence was in the story itself, clear that our Lord wasn't talking about weeds as we know weeds. He was talking about zenzanion, which cannot be differentiated from the good nourishing plants in the field until quite late in their growth cycle. At last, that long time lag between the enemy's action in the night and the discovery much, much later of what he had done made sense. Knowing about Darnell and its great similarity to wheat, we can carry the implications a bit further in terms of what our Lord was telling us about the presence of the kingdom in the world and within us. First, that which is of God and that which is not of God may not be evident or discernible for a long, long time into some process of corporate or individual development. Things are not always what at first they seem to be. Second, Various aspects of our nature and relationship with God may seem to have more or less equal value, but given enough time and given our proper attention to them, we will find that some have greater or less value than others. Third, the coming of the kingdom into the world and into us automatically includes that which is in opposition to the kingdom. For however long it takes, the good and the evil will coexist together, and any attempts to disengage the evil from the good too early in the process will have disastrous results on the good. Finally, there will be occasions of harvesting, of judgment, individually and corporately, in which God will act to separate the destructive realities from the life-giving ones. God will do this for us, within us, among us. And God may even call upon us to be helpful agents one to another by which we may be relieved of our injurious zinzanion of body, mind, or spirit, even as his true and fruitful active presence in us is consolidated and claimed as holy and worthy of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You have heard the word, now the work begins. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.